How can we feel the good vibrations when everything around you is chaos? Every aspect of communication distills down to vibrations. We need to tune and focus, filter the noise, stop, listen. The universe vibrates around us, through us. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth are pushing through our bodies even now. The physical forces of creation are too. Winds, waves, thunder and the rustling of leaves in autumn, as well as the singing of a bird in spring. Back in childhood, how did we reuse old stuff, talk with our friends at a distance, and spend a summer afternoon doing something constructive, all at the same time? For those of us who grew up at a time that the transistor radios were all a rage, but walkie-talkies were a fanciful dream, the tin can telephone was the tool of choice. As long as you kept your fingers and your ears away from the jagged edge because pull rings were pretty uncommon back then, this device was a vehicle to learn skills like hammering the nail and not the thumb, like tying knots, like the fragility of matchsticks versus toothpicks, and the necessity to keep the string taut for the best results. The way this works is that the sound made by talking into one tin can makes the bass vibrate, and that vibration passes along the string, which is pulled microscopically, and that in turn vibrates the base of the second vessel. If the kid on the other end held it up to his ear, they would hear a reasonable replica of your voice, maybe a little bit tinny. To get this really right, you had to take turns in listening and speaking. What a novel idea, but a great skill. You also learned pretty fast to moderate your voice so that your friend only hears what comes through the system and not the overflow sound that would come to him if you just shouted. No one ever had a piece of string long enough to eliminate that possibility. How awesome it was when it worked. The joy was partly in the assembly of the device, but mainly in mastery of voice modulation and attentive listening. I've done the tourist thing and visited a particular building in London that has a big white dome, inside of which is a circular bench. It's called the Whispering Gallery. You sit down next to someone and you turn your head the other way and you whisper against the wall. The sound will travel all the way around the beautifully smooth, acoustically perfect gallery to be heard in the opposite ear of your neighbor. Another great example of careful modulation, vibration, and attentive reception by the listener. Whether it's sound vibrations or the dancing of photons of light or heat of warm air on your skin, the sensory input from the world around us is some kind of vibration or another. You know that feeling when you walk into a room and you feel things are really groovy or God forbid, maybe not quite right. You know, you, you just get the vibe. In that way, this sensation is the same, but higher than that of just hearing a sound. Your mind, heart and body are detecting signals that are emanating from the characters in the room. And from this example, you can appreciate that you can feel more than you can hear. When the universe was created, according to our Kabbalistic masters, it was from a particle no bigger than the size of a grain of mustard. Or if you like, it was a Big Bang. Either way, the matter extended from this point outwards. And the energy that was encapsulated in that event began to radiate out in all dimensions. And it continues to radiate out. The universe is really expanding on that wave of energy. We are inside and surrounded by these projections of the original energy. Each of us is influenced by it, perturbing it in our own way each of us being the center of our own world. So in a quiet moment of meditation, which could manifest itself in staring at the waves of the ocean or reading something out of the Siddur, 
or listening to a chazonic melody, uh, which are very real vibrations, by the way. If you just stand next to Greg when he's at full volume, you'll know. So to really experience the carefully whispered, modulated sounds of creation, you need to place your ear in the opening of the tin can. You need it, or you could try, to stop generating your own noise, whether that's your, your voice or your internal struggles, and tune in to the vibrations of the universe around you. They, protect, they surround you, they protect you like the comforting cardboard of an egg box that surrounds and cushions an egg. At that moment, you are the center of your own safe world. There is a fascinating phenomenon. If a guitar is placed next to a piano and say the G key is played, the corresponding string on the guitar will start to vibrate. It's called resonance. So too will we resonate if we tune into the clean and pure notes of the universe's vibrations that are constantly reaching out to us to bring and keep our lives in perfect harmony. On a big macro level, the world in which we stand is spinning and it's rotating around the sun, yet another vibration of sorts. As our lives spin seemingly randomly and out of control, the periodicity of the seasons and the festivals vibrate predictably, providing us with an infinite earthing strap that no matter what, we can surge and ebb and then surge again when we're re-energized, but only if we quieten down. Feel the vibe, get in sync with it, resonate, and positively project that to our nearest neighbors. We can achieve this, ironically, by being passive, not active. Be the guitar next to the piano. Receive that which is given, that which emanates from the original energy source. Too much gavura, too much rigidity, and our strings, our inner selves, can never and will never vibrate with that effortless purity. To gain the most, I believe, is when we just allow. But to allow, we must be aware. We need to revert to that childhood moment with the tin can telephone and give a chance for the vibrating signal to go along the string and to listen, which is, of course, the more passive role. Let the talker talk. And let your soul sing with the success of the entire enterprise of creation as the vibrations fill, enrich, and renew you. Chag Shavuot Sameach.